Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge, and we've got a free tiger. Does that mean like a tiger on the loose? <laughs> this one's in the bright green color. They've got a number of different models. This is my very first free tiger review. 14C 28 inch stainless steel, G10 handle scales, liner lock, flipper or thumb stud deployment. It's a very um, general purpose clip point blade with a swedge. Great for piercing, you know, a nice saber grind, a very robust kind of knife. It's kind of cool and at a very good price. So stick around. The review's coming right now. That shirt is a bright green, isn't it? If I would have seen it in the black stone wash uh, before I bought mine, I probably would have got the purple one with the black. That I think that would have been cool. This bright green, it's easy enough to dye G10. If you have ever dyed G10, you know that this bright G10, you'd be able to dye it to a good purple if you wanted to. Let's take a look at the size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1 first. It's a very similarly sized knife. The uh, length is almost identical, you know, within an eighth of an inch, basically. Uh, the cutting edge, you know, very, very close to the same <laughs> length in the cutting edge. The handle, just a little bit shorter. Very similar knife. So this can easily handle extra large hands, but not too much larger. If your hands are totally into the extra large range and far into it, your pinky might not like this zone right here, unless you have it sit right on the end. So I tested it. Uh, I did hold it this way, which gives a little extra reach if you need extra reach, and that's fairly secure. The pocket clip gets a little hot in the hand in the uh, right hand for that due to how far this sticks up here. I would bend this, but I review it the way it comes from the factory and that's one of the cons right here. This pocket clip, I like it in terms of how it's made, how it attaches. I don't always want ultra deep pocket clips, so totally fine with this end of the pocket clip. It's just right here. It sticks out a long ways right there and it take this curve and flatten it out a little bit. Let's take a look at it going into a pocket. First thing you'll notice is that is much higher. It just, I can't do it on an angle, but that just sticks so far out. It's easy to get it to get started and then it goes on. About three quarters of an inch sticking out. And this green, of course, is super obvious, but again, you could get the black and or even the purple and it would blend in a whole lot more. So I like the pocket clip in terms of how it attaches as well. It's got a big round screw, so that puts a lot of even pressure on it. And if you can see it right there, and I'll show you a close up of that, you've got the milled out section just a little bit exposed there, so it doesn't really need a plate, but it's a nice, milled spot where it only goes in one way and that stops it from torquing back and forth. So I really like how they made it. They did something on their own. They didn't just copy what everybody else does and put the same kind of pocket clip that everybody else has on there. So I like things when they're a little bit different if they're made well. And for the most part this pocket clip's made well. Just a small change it needs right at the tip there. The backspacer that's aluminum, so the color is a little bit off. It's another reason why maybe the black one would be a better choice, but there's some jimping back here, and then the backspacer terminates in the lanyard hole, plenty big enough for 550 paracord there, and it's inset so that your paracord won't bundle out really wide. I like that it's right at the tail end, so when the knife is in your hand, you know, if the, par if the hole was here, you know, it bunches up in the soft of your hand and it's just not good. The placement is very, very good for that. And a reverse grip, not the most comfortable until you get to reverse pull grip. That's actually quite comfortable. That's 
this is a power cut because you can use a lot of force when you're pulling a knife back towards yourself. Your regular saber grip or fist grip, they're both very nice. We've got a little bit of a recess milled into the liners right there for your thumb to sit in there. That's comfortable. And when you want to stretch it out further, there's some really nice jimping there. So that's really good. Going back on the blade, you've got the back, the thumb rest here, and then it comes down a step, and then you've got the clip point right there. A nice swedge. So it makes for a strong tip, and yet it's one that's a thinner and good for piercing into things as well. And then you've got your nice saber grind here, so loads of belly and a straight edge here. You've got everything you want, at least everything I want, in a good EDC blade right here. Very functional, durable, strong, good steel. I do have to say one thing, though. Is this really 14C28N? I can say probably. And that's all I can say. Lee over at Love Them Knives has had some free Tiger knives tested. They were all D2 steels. What I'm trying to say is those free Tiger knives that say they had D2, two of them had D2. One of them was about 420 instead of D2. So unfortunately, I can't explicitly trust free Tiger. Chances are high that it's real, but we don't know for sure. Hopefully Lee at Love Them Knives will have one of these uh, Sandvik Steel Free Tigers tested sometime in the, uh, well, I can't say very near future, but yeah, hopefully he will. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I'll leave a link down below to his channel. When you get to his channel, do a search for batch tests, and you'll see a lot of videos where he talks about knives. They test not only how hard the steel is, but if the steel is the same steel as it claims to be. I really love that there's somebody like Lee over at Love Them Knives testing the knives in North America to see if they really are what they say they are. But this blade, the shape and everything, I really like. Thumb studs, yeah, they got these nice lines on them so your thumb can get traction and flick the knife open. Works very well. Uh, the left hand, works as well. Not quite as good. As you can see, there's a bigger space between the green and the thumb stud right there to get your thumb in there. On the left side, they always make it closer, so us lefties have to be better than others at getting our thumbs into tight spaces. So if you're not good at flipping knives using the flipper, and some people aren't, even though this is a huge one, you can use the thumb studs. So let's talk about the flipper. It's got a little bit of jipping on the front, Really good for light switch method that is pulling straight back. And if you push back on just a bit of an angle, that works as well. The detent is very good on this knife. It wants to keep the knife closed when it's closed. So when I shake the knife and go to a sudden stop like that, the blade does not come flying out, which is good, especially in Canada, because knives where the blade comes flying out too easily are illegal in Canada. So... This is a good knife. What's this? It's the perpetual problem. Is this a sharpener's choil or a forward choil for a finger? If it's a sharpener's choil, it's done okay. It's not too much oversized. I like it's it. It's not quite big enough for some people's fingers to get on there safely. If you just reach over quickly, there's a good chance you might nick the corner of your finger, especially if you sharpen it up really well. Lots of good grips on this. It's a sort of unique handle shape. I like that it's basically curved back here to fit in the palm well. And then you've got these milled out sections and you've got these milled out lines here for decorative effect. That's all that there for. Do they let dirt in more so than you want to have? Maybe. It depends on what environment you're going to use this thing in. If you're going to take a knife like this into a sandy area, you know, like a desert where it, where it gets windy and it blows sand around, or a beach, maybe this is not the best knife for that. 
because you're asking for dirt to get in there. Let's take this thing apart so you can see the inside. There's several things going on here. I'll try to be quick. Behind the pocket clip, it was really sticky. And now it's dark because I tried to rub it off. I'm going to have to clean this. I've got a nice ultrasonic cleaner, which works really good for cleaning G10 and a good stiff toothbrush. So that's not a problem. What we got is something weird here. There's two thin washers on the one side and none on the other. So I don't know if they were supposed to put one on either side. If the uh, assembly person got it wrong, maybe if the liners are considered too soft, maybe they put some really hard washers on either side to help durability and uh, the longevity of the pivots, the, uh, the ball bearings and everything to work on the system so that it doesn't eat you know how sometimes ball bearings, they'll eat a trench into the handle on the liners. You can see this side here has got a nice little trench on it. And because there was two liners on this side, there's no little trench on that side. So I'm going to try putting one on either side when I reassemble it. Ball bearings, they're actually very small. There's 10 tiny ceramic ball bearings in here. And there's a ceramic detent here. Pretty good. One challenge is the holes are not very deep. So your screwdriver goes in there and since it's very shallow, not very deep, it's going to be really easy to strip those things out and wreck them. So be careful. I would suggest getting drive grip. I've talked about this product many times on this channel. I've got a video about it. It's an anti cam out fluid. It's like a liquid grit that you can put in where a screwdriver is and it helps give you extra grip. The pins are D-shaped and these holes are D-shaped. So it does lock in there properly. A little bit of wiggle back and forth, but since this is not one piece, these screws can come out both ends. It sort of defeats the purpose of a D-shaped pin. So if you get these, I would suggest use thread locker on one side, but not on the other. They may have done that here. So I'm gonna test that right now. So holding this screw here and holding the post anyways, turning this out. Yeah, there's a tiny little bit of blue you can see in there, some thread locker, but very little. It was too easy to take out. Uh, what I would suggest is more thread locker in there. Where's the other one? Let's see how difficult it is to open this one here. Get it in there. Those, those shallow screws, I really dislike that. Yeah, this one's pretty tight. So the thread locker in this one's pretty tight, but not super tight. So I, I, I just dislike this. It's not optimal. It's okay, but not optimal. I'd like this to be one piece. Before we go on further, do any of you notice anything different with this now? The pocket clip's on the left side. But there's a proprietary hole in here. No problem. They provide a left and a right pocket clip. So those of you who are looking at the thing before, wondering with that standoff how that works, that's how it works. And I didn't mention it before either. They do bring, give it with a little bit of a pouch. Nothing super special, but there you go. Now that you've seen all the insides, let's take all the measurements and all those other specs. How much does it weigh? 145 grams, 5.1 ounces. Factory sharpness, 120 best. That's very sharp from the factory. Good thing. The length of the cutting edge, 85.5 millimeters. That's 3.366 inches. The blade length tip to the G10, 88.5 millimeters, that's 3.484 inches, so almost three and a half inches. The blade thickness at the flat up here, 3.47 millimeters, that's 0.1365, so a little over an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, the widest spot is right here, 29.2 millimeters, 1.149 inches. 
the thickness of the edge behind the grind, right about in the middle of this flat section, right there, I measured it at 0.46 millimeters, 18 thousandths of an inch, nice and thin behind the grind. That also makes it a good slicer. The grind angle. There's about three degrees of variation along the length of the edges on both sides. Um, let me see. This side, around the middle section here, it's about 14.7 degrees, and it changes at either end. This side around the middle is about 23.4 degrees. Talking about the length still, the handle length, not counting the G10 sticking out here. I mean, not counting the aluminum of the uh, backspacer. 119.3 millimeters, 4.697 inches, so 4.7 inches basically. The grip area, it's about 10 centimeters, about 4 inches, give or take a tiny bit. The handle thickness, 15.2 millimeters, that's 0.598 of an inch, so 6 tenths of an inch thick. The handle depth within the grip area, the biggest spot's about here, 25.1 millimeters, 0.988 of an inch. When the knife is closed, the width is greatest right up here by the flipper, 34.1 millimeters, 1.342 inches. And the total length of the knife, oh, I did it again. It's on the screen, 21.29 centimeters, which equals that many inches. And that many inches is going to be very close to eight and three eighths roughly. So what do you think of this knife? The price of it? $27.99 at Amazon.com. I'll put links for other stores down below as well. Uh, AliExpress has it for just uh, pretty close to that price. So for international shipping, there you go. Get it from AliExpress. If you are in America, $27.99 American. Is it worth it? Totally. It's totally worth that price. So the final summary statements, the final pros and cons, overview, what have you. This is a good full-size folder. It's built tough, you know, and it's made very, very well for the price that it is. You know, always in that context, you know, this isn't the equivalent of, you know, a Sabenza knife. It's not that build quality, but... For an under 30 US dollar knife, it's got a very good build quality. I really like the backspacer lanyard option back here. The color matching is a little bit off. Eh, no big deal. You can get it in a couple other colors, especially the black wash. I like that. Good grip. You know, the pocket clip, very functional, useful. I'm going to bend that down and make it a wonderful pocket clip. Right now, it's merely a good pocket clip but it can be much, much better. I like it. Sometimes not having a deep carry clip, easy to pull the thing out of your pocket. Sometimes a very deep clip makes it a little bit more tricky to get the knife out of your pocket. The cons. I would really like this to be more distinctly either just a sharpness choil or a full forward choil for a finger. This in-between kind of stage, I don't prefer. Is it a major thing? No. It's just a, a nitpicky thing of mine. Could have used a little more skeletonizing to make it a bit lighter, balance point a bit better. Yep. And these vents. You're asking for the knife to get a little bit dirty. So depending on the context of where you're going to use it, this knife may or may not be a good choice. So thank you so much for watching my video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the best. If you want to become a Patreon supporter of the channel and help me continue to grow the channel and move it forward. I sell almost everything that I buy, so I will be doing a knife sale, and I give my Patreon supporters first dibs at all my knife sales. Go to patreon.com slash cce and sign up. There's other really nice benefits for being a Patreon supporter too. Thanks for watching, thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing, and remember friends, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.